Last week, I wanted to be here so bad. And then in the evening service, I wanted to be in two places at once, okay, uh, at the different uh, places. I have some handouts for you this morning other than your bulletin, and I'm going to reference them and um, uh, Lord willing give you them at the end of the service. I'll take one of each right now for myself um, and pray that we could uh, think about this theme, prayer warrior. Let's take the uh, um, war room emphasis in that film uh, to the streets. Let's take it to our knees. Let's take it to this message even uh, as we think about Jesus headed toward the cross, headed toward the cross, praying in Gethsemane, uh, sharing uh, with the disciples the communion service as we did last week um, in my absence, I trust. Yes, Yes, okay. Uh, in Matthew chapter 26, it says in verse 26, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take eat, this is my body. And he blessed it. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you that I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung in him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And this is a beautiful scene of the togetherness of the disciples with the Lord Jesus Christ in thankfulness and appreciation as Jesus blesses these elements. And then they go out to the Mount of Olives and uh, sung in him. And, 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 he, and it's a beautiful time of anticipation of things that they're learning of, but not understanding of what will happen. I will not drink it again with you until I drink it anew. And all these things of anticipation that we yet still, 2,000 years later, anticipate of the Lord's return and of that celebration of drinking anew. But something was coming, uh, something coming first. And we read on in verse 31, and it, and it says there, uh, then saith Jesus unto them, all Ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd. And there is a hint of what's coming as Jesus is going toward the cross. I will smite the shepherd and the sheep. Uh, these disciples of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Uh, but after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Uh, Peter answered and said, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Be careful. Be careful what you say. Um, Jesus said unto him, Verily I send thee this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, die with thee. Uh, first they were dining with the Lord. Then this phrase of dying with the Lord um, is present here. I should die with thee. I will not deny thee. Likewise also said, all the disciples. And then this thought of the scene there of Gethsemane. As Jesus comes in that scene, and it says that Jesus cometh with them unto the place called Gethsemane, and he saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be very sorrowful and very heavy, and he saith unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tear ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little further, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he came unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep. Findeth them asleep. Saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O my father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went again and prayed a third time, saying the same words. 
Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on, now take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. Let's pray again and ask the Lord to do something special in our lives under this subject of pray with. Pray with. Father, I pray that you would bless our time together. Take us to Gethsemane. Take us to that scene, Lord, and help us to be uh, of the ones, Lord, that are close and near and dear. Lord, help us to realize the great privilege that we have in prayer and not be asleep and miss the opportunity that is presented. And Father, I pray that you would bless in this service today and as we prepare for a Resurrection Sunday and a uh, Good Friday and a crucifixion, Lord, um, uh, emphasis in the, in the upcoming couple weeks, Father, I pray that you would, you would stir our hearts again anew and afresh with the scenes. Lord, bring these scenes before us, scenes of Calvary. We'll thank you and we'll praise you and we'll ask you to do something special in our church and in our midst, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. To pray and to pray with. To pray and to pray with. Um, it's not that they could not, but sadly they did not pray. Could you not pray with me one hour? Watch and pray. Uh, they, they, they could have. Um, they, they should have. They should have. But they, they didn't. And we will not know, nor ever be able to know, what could have and what should have happened in that equation of the scene there in Gethsemane, the scene in the garden where it was the question asked, could you not pray with me? And, and so, so this scene in the garden is, is before us, and I would like to bring that scene uh, before you and I and ask a similar question of the scene in Gethsemane and wonder if you were there, if I were there, uh, would you... Would you be praying? Would you be watching? Uh, would you have the spiritual alertness and the spiritual discipline? Would you sense the time and sense the hour and sense the need and sense the occasion? And, and we don't understand theologically all uh, about uh, the Lord and his prayer life, but oftentimes he resorted to even this place in prayer. And then again, uh, we see through the Gospels time and time again where Jesus is praying. And as uh, God the Son prays to God the Father, it's an interesting theological question, but certainly we can say for our instruction, Jesus prays again and again and again, and he asks for this special occasion of, could you not uh, pray with me? Watch and pray. And he invites us into a very special and a very precious uh, intimacy with himself at a very uh, precious and, and, and very difficult hour, the hour of him sweating great drops of blood, the hour of his trial, the hour of his temptation, the hour of his wrestling uh, over this, uh, the will of uh, my will not be done, but thy will uh, to be done. And, and, and what, a, what, a, what, a, what a wrestling that occurred in the sweat drops of blood and the angels come and, and minister and, and and you see the enemy tempting and the and the the, the 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 Lord prevailing in prayer. And what teaching, what lesson is there for us to pray with? And so I'd like to ask you the question simply why? Why why would we pray? And I'm gonna uh, highlight this theme of, of praying with, for it is highlighted uh, throughout Scripture, and certainly there is a uh, praying with that is present um, with you and God. 
in the privacy of your thought life, in the privacy of your closet. I'm so glad about prayer that we can pray anytime. I can pray right now and you don't even know it, okay? But I can pray with you and there's a different dynamic. And, 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 and God said his house should be called a house of prayer and we're assembled for uh, the praying and the preaching, the, the reading, the exhortation of scripture. But let God's house be a house of prayer. And then he says, we're two or three or more gathered uh, in their midst. There am I. And it seems to be a special praying with uh, opportunity that should not be missed. And I wonder if we could, if we could uh, highlight in, an opportunity and ask, uh, could we uh, learn a lesson of this thought of pray with? Could we accent this in our church and in our personal lives, in our family lives, in our relationships, uh, uh, in a better way? Could we spend more time in and more time together in prayer with one another to the Lord Jesus Christ and very preciously with the Lord Jesus Christ. This thought of pray with, and could we hear him echo uh, in the garden and from the garden today, could you not pray with? It's not that they couldn't. It's, it's that they didn't. It's that they didn't. Um, all things were brought to the remembrance of the disciples in the writing of Scripture, and miraculously, we have recorded what Jesus prayed. But not by the actual remembrance of the disciples, for they were sleeping. <laughs> okay? They were sleeping. Uh, it says in the Scriptures a uh, verse that haunts me regarding prayer many times. Uh, could you not pray with me is one of them. And then, and then this, uh, you know, hitherto have ye asked me nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive. That's a verse in John chapter 16 and verse 22 that, 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 that by and large we haven't asked anything. And, and, and to the disciples now, they are embarking on a new, wonderful access and very presence of God and the means of that access by the Lord Jesus Christ, by a new and living way. And hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive. And then the comment of James, uh, ye have not, finish the verse with me, because ye ask not. Ask! Uh, it is the verse of scripture there in, in the in the epistle of James. And, and, and I, I don't know if there's a person here, and I know there's a person in front of you that needs a stirring in prayer. And prayer with one another. And intimacy time with the Lord Jesus Christ is so precious. I wonder if we could ask you to pray with in a special way. We're going to do that today. Uh, we're going to ask you to do more than just sit and listen to the sermon. Why? Why would we ask you? And, and at the end of the message, we're going to, we're going to give you a, a little uh, uh, an opportunity. This is going to be between you and God. It's going to be something between uh, you and the Lord. It's just a little piece of paper that says pray with and a, and a, and a, and a prayer partner. And maybe, maybe one, maybe two prayer partners in the church. Maybe you'll get to know and fellowship and bless somebody in praying with them one to two times a week. And, and, and shall we ask for an hour, a sweet hour of prayer? Could you not pray with me one hour? Uh, how about we ask for five minutes in prayer? Uh, somehow I have the thought that something is a lot more than nothing. <laughs> Are you with me on that? Uh, for us not to pray is, is really bad. For us to pray some is a whole lot more than not to pray at all. And, and could we just scratch the little surface, and, and, and we're not going to police this at all, but we're going to put this in your hands, in each one of your hands, and ask you to find a, 
a, a prayer partner that you're going to say through the end of this month and through the next month that once or twice a week, uh, I'm going to call them up. I'm going to get together with them. We're going to spend uh, five minutes or more in prayer together, and, and we're going to give you some suggestions on the back of this card of 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 what to pray for, and then leave some spot for your own suggestions. Uh, along with that will come this paper, and maybe you would like to have others uh, pray together with you, uh, and, and, and have others that are not even praying with you, praying for you of some particular requests. And so this is a form that you could hand in and you could put the best way to communicate with me because I want to get those requests uh, of others and I want to pray uh, for others and I want some others to pray for the requests that I will share. And so you could share some requests that would be disseminated uh, through email or through a phone or through a, a text message and just some opportunities to, to, to encourage and increase uh, the effective prayer list and the effective prayer chain that could go on in this theme in this banner of could you not could you not pray with me could you not pray with me i wonder if it could be a a game changer in our lives as we hand out a member attender list with your name on it i believe yes Every one of you, maybe not spelled correctly, maybe a little editing needed on the, uh, you know, the location and stuff like that. But, but a, a prayer list, uh, with, with, with many names on it. And each of these names, I believe, are present here. And maybe Mr. Nolan, just visiting last week here, is not on it yet, but could be next time. And we could print it again, real quick and real easy. But, but here's the package. Could you not? Could you not pray with me? Could you not pray with me? Jesus uh, makes his plea for it. Um, could we put down, you know, that I would pray with maybe this person and, and maybe this other person in a special other time, maybe before or after a service as we meet together and assemble, uh, maybe at a special coffee time or a special uh, lunch time, maybe over the telephone. Okay, and we could pray together with one another. Could we not? Could we not pray with one another? Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Um, is a good time for me to say this because my wife walked out of the room. Oh boy. I have the most amazing wife. <laughs> Somebody said amen. <laughs> I'm going to say amen. Yesterday, I interrupted her life, I think, four different times with me needing to be in two different places and me needing someone to come uh, behind me as I was caravanning a tractor, a truck and a trailer and all kinds of things, and, and she... She said, yes, I'll do that. We passed right by a policeman, and he was very bored. And I would not have even been able to see this policeman if he tried to pull me over with how much stuff I had. Now, I had a light twirling. I had four-way flashers on. I, I had her then trailing me. And so the policeman just stayed right there on the side of the road. And I asked my wife, see, that's why that's why I needed you. She said, what policeman? You know, <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't see him. I I saw him. She didn't see him, and 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 so uh, she was an amazing wife. And then then I went to drop it off, and they were closed. I had called them, but they gave me wrong information. I went to two other places. Then I uh, then she she went another place. Then I found on a phone that another place that could take it in thirty minutes north. And 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 so she rerouted and came back. And then again I interrupted her for something else. And then again in the afternoon I was supposed to be in two places, and someone was getting out of the hospital. And I said, look. For for the silver Subaru. It's my wife's Subaru. I didn't tell him that my wife and daughter and grandchild would be in the car instead of me. <laughs> but my wife just kept rerouting. And she's the most amazing wife. And, and what does she ask in return? You know? That I pray with her.
that we'd have a spiritual closeness to one another. That we'd spend some more time together in prayer. We'd be at the top of her list of what does she want to see in her man. That he would lead in prayer. In 1 Peter 3, the Bible the Bible tells uh, the, the wives uh, exactly what to do, and you can read it in 1 Peter 3, and then it says, likewise, you husbands, as if you're not getting off the hook, and then, it, and then it says, dwell with them according to knowledge and give honor unto them, and then it says this little phrase, that your prayers, husband, wife, that your prayers be not hindered. Can I say, God assumes that we're praying together as a husband and wife. Uh, when God says, my house shall be called a house of prayer, God assumes that we'll be praying together as a body of believers. When, when, when God says uh, uh, that where two or three are gathered, uh, there am I in their midst, and if you ask anything, according to my will, it shall be done unto you. What, what a, not only an assumption, but what an invitation for us to pray together. When he comes in the garden, and he's in his hour of trial, and he's going to sweat great drops of blood. And humanly speaking, this is the, the focal point. This is the pinnacle of his earthly humanity, of what he came to do when he was born uh, to die. And this, this cross, as he faced it in his humanity, and he says to those that are near, he says to those that are dear, he says to those that have been chosen by him, could you not, could you not pray with me? Could you not pray with me? And, and they sleep. And so I, I like to just prick this little conversation here, and I'd like to hand this out, and I'd like to not police it, because I don't think prayer is something we can police. But I'd like to prick it, and I'd like to, I'd like to cultivate it, I'd like to fertilize it, and I'd like to water it a little bit through just plowing through this passage of Scripture and just quickly giving you some reasons why we should pray and why we should pray with. And let's share them from the passage. And I'd like to say, first of all, there's a special presence, a special presence with God as we, as we pray with. Now, we're praying with the Lord and that's special right there, but it's also special in increasingly and multiplying in synergy special as we pray with one another. It's a special presence of God. Uh, they were with Jesus, and, and shall we say, shall we say in that garden scene, so close and yet so far away. And he's wanting them to watch and to pray that they enter not into temptation. Could you not pray with me? And he takes even his closest and the more intimate of, of Peter and the sons of Zebedee. And, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he goes a little bit further. And he just, just wants a special presence together. And, and so this is, uh, this is them with God incarnate. Wow. Uh, I, I would have I stayed awake. Well, well, not so fast. Be careful for how many times do we just find ourselves <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the shoes of the disciples and on the pillow of the disciples, and maybe if it were a rock, it wouldn't have mattered. We'd have still been sleeping. But this was a special presence with God incarnate. If they had only seen it, if they had only sensed it, if they had only known it, if they had only realized that, that this will never be repeated and never be repeatable, that we could pray right now that if they would only sense that in a, in a little while the Holy Spirit's going to come and, 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 and give utterance and Matthew's going to write down these very words of what was said while he slept. Miraculously given to Matthew to recount. And he writes them there for us and as a kind of a testimony against them of that they slept when they could have been with. It's a it's a special presence, and, and, and I wonder if we will miss the special presence of God. They, with God incarnate, we, with God ascended, for the Bible says that he, he ever lives to make intercession for us, and the Bible says that, that we have a special presence of God. In Acts chapter 1, they saw him ascending, and, and they stood gazing, and they had to be nudged, you know, by the messengers, hey, this same Jesus, 
is going to come again. Uh, you shall receive power. Go, be witnesses, and, and, and have a special relationship with the ascended one, the God ascended, who is to the very throne and invites us into the very throne of grace. And the Bible says, seeing then that we have, and this is the Hebrews passage listed before us, seeing then that we have uh, a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may have obtained mercy and find grace uh, to help in time of need. Wow. In Hebrews chapter 7, that was Hebrews chapter 4. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 24, it says, This man continueth forever in an unchangeable priesthood, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us. That's the incarnation. He became us us and he is holy and harmless and undefiled separated from sinners and made much higher uh, than the heavens who needed not daily as those priests to offer sacrifice first for their own sins and then for the people's sins for this he did once when he offered up himself uh, this is this is the lord jesus christ we're talking about and he invites us to pray with him and we only have this time to enjoy this sweet hour of prayer. And one day, we'll pass through the air and bid farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. But time is passing, and we're not praying. And God invites us to pray and to pray with. It's a, it's a special thing to be with somebody in a special place, and I got the passes. I've been waiting a long time for this. <laughs> but I, I say that if I have a big enough Bible in the hospital, I can go right into the OR. I can go. <laughs> now, that may not be true. <laughs> One time, I was in an emergency, uh, emergency room instead of an OR. And I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. But there's a special presence there when you got a special invitation. And I was with that special invitation. There was a special grandma there. And I, I got to hold this special little baby. And it's a, it's a special time, I wonder, if we would consider it as special, special. What's that, what's that little baby's name again? Elena. Yes, I should know that. Elena. Okay. A special presence. And it's a special thing. But we can, we can miss that, can't we? Um, we can go right in and invite it, but you can only do that right during those and you know few hours and days, maybe with a C-section more. Uh, and it's a special time, and it's a special place, and it's a special presence. I hear this incarnate one as a babe in a manger, Jesus Christ, this one who came with and was there present. <laughs> This one who is now ascended invites us to a special time and a special presence. Why pray? Because it's a special presence with God Almighty. And God wants us to come into this special presence and find grace in time of need and be a blessing and be blessed as we share together prayer with. It's a special presence. Secondly, it's a special power. Um, it's a power from on high. Uh, more prayer, more power, more of you in my life is the songwriter as this theme is unfolded in our eyes. And there's a, a there's a uh, prayer power that is coming and it's a it's a all power is available. And I'm thinking of the passage of scripture in uh, Matthew, all power is given unto me, go ye. This is this is the power of God. It's available unto us, a prayer power. Now I'm thinking of prayer power and communication. Now this jumped out at me this week. Wow. I don't know, little little munchkin. I don't know what she's saying, but it's a powerful communication tool, isn't it, that thing? And uh, that's what this one was saying, okay? Uh, 
<laughs> Looking for nursery workers, okay? And helper, helpers there. Have you seen how cute I am? That's a cute little baby. I don't know, it's baby day today, I guess. But uh, are you available? Available to God. God is a, 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 a closer than a phone call away. All the things that have to happen. Uh, I, I remember we had someone, it was an engineer who worked on these cell phones and the cell towers. And, and, and he said the most difficult thing about the cell towers in the mobile world was getting one cell tower to transfer to the next cell tower so that as you drive, you would not hit the dead spot, dead spot, dead spot, but you would have a non-interrupted communication and a repeating of the signal uh, into your cell phone. And, and if you think of all the complicated things that can go on between, uh, you know, my calling here and, and Hannah answering back there, and she probably would ignore me with, <laughs> with the, she was never phone with her. Okay, it, 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 it's just an amazing thing. How much more amazing is it that in the speed of thought, I can just now have already asked God to help me finish this message in a way that would please him and touch our hearts with effectiveness and change and game changing, and it's not a game in this game and responsibility of life. Amen? And that's to pray, to pray that we have access and communication and power with God, and all that power is available. Uh, when I go into a hospital, I often share Psalm chapter 4. I don't want to share it now, uh, but I give you the prescription, and it's the prescription, the Rx that Pastor Becker can give. And some people have called me Dr. Becker. I ain't no doctor, okay? And I go in there and I say, I give you a prescription, and if it has Rx behind it, don't fill it and don't take it. It'll probably kill you. But if it has, instead of Rx, it has PS, as in Psalm 4, then you might want to take it. And it says, hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You've helped me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me. And hint number two, hear my prayer. The Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. There's the, there's the third one. The Lord will hear me when I call. There's the third hint at what prescription I would give you when you are at your weakest point in the hospital bed, flat on your back with all the tube steaks coming into your veins. You know, that's what you're eating and you're having tube steak for dinner, okay? And you're get up and go, got up and went and you can't go too far too fast because you've got all the Christmas tree, that's what I call them, holding you. And, and you're in that hospital bed and the doctor says the next verse, Psalm 4, verse 4. What does it say? Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. The most powerful thing in the universe can be done at the most weakest point of our human existence. And that is we can pray. That's why we ought to get good at praying. Amen? And we ought to get good because if we could just rub two brain cells together, we could be in a coma not even being able to speak or communicate or react or respond in any way. And they say, you can still hear. And God can still hear. Amen? And you can do the most powerful thing on the planet in your most weakest state of your existence. Wow. We ought to learn to pray because it's powerful. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye into all the world. Make disciples. Could we pray for evangelism? Could we pray for discipleship? Could we pray for effectiveness as we reach out for the glory of God to fulfill his commission? What power is available in prayer? Luke chapter 24 talks about, tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And it was at a prayer meeting where this power came. It was power, power, power in prayer. We have power. Our loved ones, uh, someone said it was um, in a quote, our loved ones may spurn our appeals. They may reject our message. They may oppose our arguments. They may despise our persons, uh, but they are helpless against our prayers. <laughs> we can pray. We can pray. And God will do amazing things. That was Jay uh, Sidlow Baxter in, 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 in thinking of the power that we have in prayer. It's all power available to us as we pray. 
And then in a special way, if two or more uh, shall agree on earth, it says in Matthew chapter 18, as touching anything, uh, they shall ask and it shall be given, uh, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. And I often think of that, there am I in the midst, that Jesus is in the mix, okay? Uh, we got problems, we got difficulties, we got challenges, we got mountains, but we got Jesus, and we got Jesus in the mix. And you mix Jesus into the problems and the challenges and the mountains that you face and the dead ends you think you're in, uh, and it's a game changer. And could we not pray with? In that context, it was a praying with of, of the uh, disciples there assembled in dealing with difficult issues of forgiveness and repentance and restoration and even rejection of, of, of the sinner uh, that would not repent. And, 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 and in that context, he says, if two or three or more are gathered, there am I in the midst. Ask, ask. And oh, what power we have in prayer all power is available. I wonder if we'll, you know, just just find out later what kind of power we could have had. I wonder if we'll if we'll uh, it, it be in regret and remiss. Why don't Why don't we just catch the remiss right now and think of all that could be, all that would be, all that should be, all that might have happened if we would just pray and pray with one another. This is the plea. This is the, the, the available thing. All power is available. Um, someone sent me this last night, uh, ASAP. I like that. What does that mean? ASAP. Uh, as, no, it doesn't. We got a new meaning for it. Always stop and pray. ASAP. <laughs> Always stop and pray. Okay? And two kids were on their way to school, and they heard the five-minute bell, and they were more than five minutes away. And they said, we better stop and pray. And the other kid said, why don't we pray while we run? <laughs> we can pray anytime, any place, and we can pray any, pla any pace. We can pray at the speed of thought. Always, always stop and pray. All power is given. All power is available, but, but sadly, in the context, I'm reminded that all power is, is avoidable. We can go it on our own. We can sleep. We can skip. We can neglect. We can plan and scheme and sort it out and figure it out and try it out and work it out and retry it out and bump our heads again, again, and again, and again, and again, or we can just pray. <clears throat> A lot of power in my little Subaru. <clears throat> but the other day it wouldn't start. So none of that power... <laughs> was available. And, and I tried every which way to start it. I said, start my Subaru. I've had problems before with my Subaru, and I can start my Subaru. And so uh, uh, I knew the battery was uh, uh, taken off, and, and some electrical work was being done on it. And so I brought not only the battery charger, which I thought would be drained, and I could recharge it and jump it with my little battery jumper. I had jumper cables if that didn't work. And then I had uh, the, the clicker uh, to click it and 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 I tried everything I tried everything and it would not start it would not start and so Subi had to be towed <laughs> again again and and Subi was towed and as soon as they got it to the shop they said I got new year good news it started right up it started right up. It's not fixed yet, but it started right up. I said, how did it start right up? I tried everything in my little bag of tricks. Well, they said, under the dashboard, there's this little button that overrides the security system, and if you hold that in while you start it, it starts right up. And I said, 
How was I supposed to know that? You know, it's so cool to know this because, because no one else knows this. And no one else can find this thing, okay? But I can find it if I put my seat all the way up and if I reach under there for five minutes and find this little button, I can push that button and I can, I can, I can turn that key and, it, and it's, it starts right up. It starts right up. And there's a little key to the power in our lives and in our church that we miss. And I'm suggesting to you today it's to pray and to pray with. To pray with. Because there's a special power. Not only is there a special power, but there's a special preparation, and we don't understand all uh, in the Lord Jesus' life and mind and humanity. We're deity, cross-sex humanity, but he prays, not my will be done, but thy will be done. And instead of de- delving into all that and figuring all that out for you, which I could wax eloquent for about three seconds on... <laughs> with my pea brain. Can I at least say that that prayer is a is a preparation and prayer prayer is has a has a wonderful purpose in taking us from my will to thy will. Think about it. Why do we usually pray? Well, we we pray, Lord, uh, in a crisis. And, and what's our prayer usually? Lord, Lord, get me out of the crisis. Okay, that's usually our prayer. Okay? And, 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 and Lord, it's, it's, it's my will. Uh, my will be done. And, 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 and so that's, that's our common, you know, as we go into prayer. But as we get closer to God in prayer and, and mature uh, before God in prayer, uh, we surrender even in prayer our will to thy will. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. And so this is the development in prayer, the resignation of, of, of our will, uh, to be it according to thy will. That's the key if you want some good counsel concerning anger, isn't it? Uh, for uh, most of our anger issues is my kingdom come, my will be done, and the person that cut me off stepped on my kingdom because I had that spot, I had that parking spot, I had that merging lane, and, and that was my kingdom. And, and, and I get angry when someone steps on my kingdom, but when I resign it to thy kingdom, then, then it changes, isn't it? It's a game changer. And instead of cursing that person out who cut you off, you pray for them. Their life, their life might be very short by the way they drive, okay? You, they, they might need a prayer. And so when somebody cuts you off, why don't you pray for them? Why don't you pray for them? Why don't you take it as a, a little opportunity in your life uh, to be pricked and prodded to pray for other people? And, and think of every time we get angry, it's over my kingdom uh, coming and, and God wants us to surrender to thy kingdom come, thy will be done in our lives. And so uh, prayer is a wonderful opportunity for us to grow and to mature and to develop and to, and to see the bigger, bigger, bigger picture. God had a big picture unfolding in the redemption of mankind and humanly it was this roadblock and spiritually it's this open door into life eternal it's thy kingdom come and so god wants us to prepare us things according according to his will there's a special preparation of god i'd like to say finally would you hear as to why we should pray and why we should pray with, would you hear this special plea of God? And I just would, would, would close with the echoing of the words of Jesus. What did he say? He said, could you not pray with me? Watch and pray. What does he say to married couples? He says that your prayers be not hindered. Uh, so make every attempt. Uh, to, to pray and to pray with or to certainly pray for and pray for that you would pray with. Uh, what does he say concerning the assembly? My house shall be called a house of prayer. What does he say concerning the opportunities that people have together where two or three are gathered in my name? I'm in the mix. There am I in the midst. 
and we agree together on things according to the will of God and, and, and it is done unto us. And, and what power, what presence, what, what, what preparation in prayer if we would just hear his plea and sense the spiritual alertness. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Be, be awake. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up as you read the newspapers and you see the signs and you see the times and you see uh, the international and you see the national and our country needs prayer. Amen? That's one thing we can all agree on. We could disagree on everything else as far as uh, political, you know, slice and, and, and perspective. But can we agree we need prayer? And if my people will humble themselves and pray, I will heal their land. Can we agree that our families and our children and the raising up of the next generation needs prayer? Hello, they're being taken from us and they're slipping from us between our fingers. Why? Because our fingers are not folded hard in prayer and we need to pray for that next generation. Could we pray together? Could we pray together with? Could we pray together for? This is what God wants us to do. Could we have a spiritual alertness and could it lead to a spiritual togetherness? Could you not pray? He took with him Peter and the sons of Zebedee and, and, and he, and he just, just wanted this special time. Watch with me. Watch with me. He repeats it again. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Pray that ye enter not into temptation. What, what, what preparation, what blessing of, of, of being in prayer and in prayer with one another as we Serve God together. Could we, could we see a wonderful prayer and a wonderful prayer with? Watch and pray. This is what God wants us to do. Now, I can't, <clears throat> I can't organize it. I can't administrate it. I cannot dictate it. I cannot, I cannot, uh, prescribe it. I cannot enforce it. I cannot monitor it. And I don't want to. But I do want to lead it. I tried to kick everybody out of my, uh, living room last night and that was, that was a challenge. As soon as I went in there, Graceland called, called in there. I gave Graceland back to her mommy. <laughs> And she called back in, and then we just, we just, I, I just want to talk with my wife. And I talked about this and the printing of it, and I talked about this and the, the re-editing of it, and I, and I, and I, could we make this and say it clearly, and what exactly are we trying to do? And, and then Grayson walks in, then Hannah walks in, then, then Audrey came, and I said, just, I just want to talk to one person, and I want to ask her, could this Help and bless and change us. And that's between me and God and her. Amen. And I'm not saying we don't pray, but I'm saying we can sure pray more. And we can sure pray better. Pray with. And I wonder if we could give you this paper and it could bless you and somebody else for the glory of God. And this paper is between you and God and somebody else that God would lead you to pray with. Maybe two people. And we could multiply this ministry and this prayer fellowship in prayer. Maybe it'd lead you to Wednesday night and coming together. Maybe it would lead you to, to write some requests out and some ways that you want to be contacted with prayer requests and we can become part of a more effective chair, prayer chain at the crossroads. Maybe it would lead you to to each day of the week take a column of the members and the attenders of, of the crossroads and, and we could pray with. But could we, could we pray now and ask the Lord to help us to have a special presence and a special power and a special preparation for the glory of God? And could we hear his special plea? Could you not pray with me?